If you've never used Unreal Engine and want to get started, this video is perfect for you. My goal is that at the end of this tutorial series, you can start creating your own environments without needing to follow a tutorial. You are going to learn everything you need to know to get started in Unreal and make cool renders like these. Starting with Unreal. Ready to start? Awesome! Get the Epic Games Launcher, go to the Unreal Engine tab, and download it. Once it's open, choose Film, because we're creating an environment, and then select the blank template. OK, Unreal is open. Click and hold the right click on your mouse, and you can look around. While you're still holding, you can use W, A, S, and D to move around the scene. It won't work if you're not holding right click on your mouse. If you press E, you get up. And when you press Q, you go down. Now I want you to play around with that and just get comfortable. Some of that might be a little confusing at first, but you get used to it pretty fast. Since you're learning the control, you might want to know how to change the camera speed. See this button? You can click on it and drag it to the speed you want. The higher number, the faster. Then, the lower, the slower. We will use this later. When creating large environments, it's quite important to have a fast-moving camera. Really, just keep moving around and use what you know so far. Now I'll show you how to add objects in your scene. Click the cube with a plus, and you can see there's a lot of things we can add. For now, we'll focus on the shape section. Add a cube. It's spawned below the ground. But that's OK. I can put it back up. Now it could be handy to put the camera speed lower. So, see these three arrows? You can move the cube around using these. Just click and hold the one you want and move the cube in the direction the arrow is pointing. For example, the up arrow make the cube go up and down. Play around with that a little and get comfortable. When you're ready, switch to the rotate mode by clicking on this. Now, just like the arrows, you can click and hold a color and rotate in the direction you want. The arrow option allows you to select objects, but you can't do much with it for now. Select the last option for scale. Again, you get some sort of arrow, and you can scale the cube in the direction of your choice. You can use Q, W, E, and R on your keyboard to change the tool you're using. You need to learn those shortcuts, that's non-negotiable. They will be incredibly useful later on. You possibly noticed when you move the cube, it moves up in blocks. Really not smooth and you don't have much control. These three buttons right there are directly related to the move, rotate, and scale options. This is the snapping. If you want, you can totally disable it. For moving the cube, it's this one. Disable it, and you gain full control of the exact position of the cube. Click again, and you can turn it back on. Optionally, you can set a number for the snapping. Setting it to 50 makes the snapping a lot worse, but this can be useful sometimes. Now select the rotate option. Just like for moving, there is a snapping. It works the same way. You can disable it or change the strength. Scaling, same thing. Disable the snapping if you want or change the value. Look between these two arrows. There's a line. If you click and hold that line and then drag it, you can change the scale in only those two directions. At the same time, let's add some more objects. What about a sphere? Just click on it. Oops, it appeared below the ground too. Let's go a little higher so the next object appears over the ground. Let's select the cylinder. No matter what object you select here, they all move, rotate, and scale the same way. To select an object, it's pretty simple. Just click on it. To delete an object, you press the delete key on your keyboard. Now I'll show you one of my favorite part of Unreal Engine, the bridge. With Unreal Engine, you get free access to this incredible library of 3D assets. Let's see if we can find something cool here. Yeah, I'll add this. You might need to log in if you didn't already. Click on the item you want, and from there, 
you can choose the quality you want the model to be download at. You then click this green download button on it to start downloading on every item you want. And then you can export them to your scene with this blue export button. You can close that, go back to your scene. And now do control plus spacebar on your keyboard. Everything you download from Bridge will appear in a Megascans folder. So open that, and you can see we got the two items we just downloaded. You click, hold, and drag the one you want in the scene, where you want it to be placed. We'll add the two objects now. This is the content drawer. You can see everything that's in the project. The levels, we'll show what this is a bit later, and some folders. You can also create your own folders. We set it all ready, but to open this content drawer, you do control plus spacebar. Alternatively, you can click on content drawer in the lower left corner. If you didn't find the cone, just search for traffic cone and it should be there. Anyway, add whatever you want. It doesn't need to be a cone. In case you don't have the bridge tab or accidentally close it, it's easy to add back. Control plus spacebar to open the content drawer. Go back to content, right click, and select Add Quixel Content. It will open it back. See this thing in the middle? It's for video games. It just tells the engine where the player should start. We don't need that. We are here to create an environment. So just delete it. Anyway, you could add it back if you wanted to. Let's duplicate those cones. Press and hold the Alt key on your keyboard, and then click and hold an arrow and drag the cone where you want. With what you know so far, you should be able to rotate the cone and make it lay on the floor. For that, you'll need to turn off snapping and use the move and rotate options. Let me show you something real quick. If I had a sphere and find a snow texture, I can apply it to the sphere and it makes a snowball. See how that could make a super easy snowman? In fact, this will be the first complete environment we will make together. We will create a snowy place with a beautiful snowman. You don't have to remember how to add a texture for now. I will explain it with more details in the next tutorial. We talked about levels earlier. Let me show you what it really is. See this level named Main here? It's this scene with the cone, the snowman, and absolutely everything it contains. You can see in the outliner we got all the objects we added, plus the ground, the lights, the clouds, everything. Now here's how to create a new level. You see this bar at the top? You go to File, New Level, and just select the basic template. This template is pretty cool because it already contains everything I need to start creating an environment. To save this, do Control plus S on your keyboard. You should think of saving your project quite often. I'll name it 3Cube. You'll understand why in a second. I'll add this cube and duplicate it two times. Now that I made this new level, you can see it's here in the outliner. Just double click on the level you want to open. Let's go back to main. Looks familiar, huh? Now let's go back to our three cubes. Let's make another one. Basic again. I'm just naming it Empty World, because it's quite empty, honestly. The little eye icon next to object in the outliner is useful to hide object in the scene. You can think of directional light as the sun. It's the main source of light, and it's very strong. All the other effects that are here by default are very useful for making the scene what it is right now. Click on the directional light, and if you look down, you can change the intensity and make it crazy strong or super low. You can even change the color. Press and hold Control plus L on your keyboard. This will appear, and from there you can move the sun using your mouse. Just make sure you keep holding Control and L. As always, you can do Control plus Z to undo that. If you want to delete the directional light and add it again, you can certainly do that. In fact, everything that's currently in the outliner can be added manually. The directional light hides in the light section. See, it's back now. So cool. You better put it back in the folder now. I want you to stay very organized. I'm watching you. Exponential height fog is, guess what, for the fog. We can't see much fog right now, but that's definitely something we will play with a lot in the following tutorials. The clouds are very simple to use, so I'll just show it to you right now. 
Use the two first options there to change what the clouds look like. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that you know how to create a project, a level, move around, how to add objects, including those from quick sell, move, scale, and rotate them, you're ready for the next step, creating environments. I'll show you exactly how to do them. And later on in the series, I'll also show you how to create and animate metahumans that you'll be able to import in your environments. I am metahuman. If this has been useful to you so far, now might be a great time to subscribe. That would mean a lot to me, and you won't miss the next tutorials of this series. If you're serious about learning 3D, I suggest you watch at least one tutorial from this series every day, all available in this playlist.